let there be light. There we go. That's awesome. That's great. <clears throat> hey, my name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, man, it seems like I haven't seen you since last year. I mean, it's just amazing. This is great. So glad that you're here today, here in the East Venue and the West Venue and those on, online. And so glad that you're here today. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, starting today, we're starting in a new series uh, talking about uh, God's will. What is God's will? Do you know what God's will is? I, we're going we're gonna to dive into this over the next few weeks and talk about this. What is God's will for you and for me? And so I just, I was thinking about life, right? You know, that we always have so many different things to talk about. And so, so when you're like a, well, like a, a young person, uh, you're going, should I, should I go out for soccer or basketball or football or should I go for the, for, for, for the band, Maybe that. And then when, a little bit later, <clears throat> they, you start getting older and you're going, okay, should I go to college or should I just get a job? And if it's, if it's college, which college should I go to or which job should I get to? What, what should I do? And we think about this and, then, and we look at all these different things. And then when you get a little bit older, you're going, um, you know, should I, should I get married or should I be single for the rest of my life? Uh, and if I'm going to get married, should I, should I, should I uh, pick that girl or that guy or that girl over there? And which one should I pick and all that kind of stuff? And then when you get, if you did get married, you're going, okay, so now are we supposed to have kids or, or no kids, or, or maybe we're going to have one kid, or maybe we're going to have 20 kids. I'm going to tell you 20 is way too much, but that's okay. But <clears throat> um, God bless you if you can do it. Uh, but anyway, there's all sorts of things that we're t talking about and all these dis things that we have to figure out what to do. And, we're, and, we, and a lot of times we don't even ask God. But here's one thing. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to, a, um, to having a, a pet... Uh, is it a cat? Is it a dog? 100%. God says dog. Dog says God. Yeah. <laughs> dog is the only one that's supposed to be in the house. Not cats, not whatever, but that's fine. That's fine. So those of you that have cats, you're sinning, but that's fine. <clears throat> no, not really. Well, maybe, but okay. <clears throat> so... So here, here's what I want to talk to you today. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about how do we know God's will? How do we know what, what he wants for us? And I don't know. <laughs> this is just the stupidest thing, but I'm just going to tell you. I've done this before, and, I, and I'm going to guess that a lot of you have probably done this as well. Um, uh, there's, been t there's times when I, I'm driving my, my car. Nobody's in the car, just me. And I'm driving... And, and I'm talking to God, not out loud, but just in my mind. I'm talking to God about different things. And I'm saying to God, God, show me if this is your will. At that red light, <laughs> when I just keep going and it turns, what, green right away, that means it'll be yes. And so, so you know, sometimes I'll do that and then... I'm getting closer to it and getting closer to it, and it's not turning green, and so I'm slowing down, and, you know, I'm trying to make it, get it in my favor, right, <laughs> all this kind of stuff, and we do stupid things like this. Let me ask you, has anybody done anything like that, like I do? The rest of you lie. <laughs> I know you do something like that to try to figure out God's will for your life. And for my life. That is what God, that is what God does. So here's what I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about three categories for the will of God. We're going to talk about these things. There, there's actually three things of the, uh, that God has for us. And the first one I'm going to give you is this. It's the providential will of God. The providential will of God. You know what that means? That means this. It means that this is the will of God that's going to take place no matter what. God is going to do whatever he wants. So let me give you an example. So when God the Father decided to have Jesus come as a baby as Christ, at Christmas time, did God the Father ask you or me or anybody else about that? No. God is saying, I'm going to have my son Jesus be born right now. And now you... you Step back from there, and all of a sudden, Scripture tells us that there, at some point, 
Jesus is coming back, right? Jesus is coming back. But God didn't call me, and God didn't call you, and he didn't say, hey, hey Mark, um, what date do you think I should have Jesus come? He didn't ask me that. He didn't ask you that. That is his decision. It's all about him. It's providential. That's what it means. It's all about him. He will decide. And I'm going to use a uh, soccer goal for a few things today. Now, here's one of the things. I want you to put that first one up here. There we go. Providential will of God. That is God's will. He hit it right in there. He hit it at the right time, knowing that when Jesus was going to be there, knowing when Jesus was going to die, and when Jesus was going to come back. And he didn't talk to you or me about it, because it's all about him. He is going to do those things. But then when you look at these things, you come into the second one. The second one is the moral, the moral will of God. The moral will, the moral will of God. And this is talking about Scripture, because Scripture tells us, Scripture in the Bible tells us how we are supposed to live, how we are to do. This is what it is. This is where God is, was saying to us, hey, I, I gave you the, the Bible. I want you to read that. I want you to understand that what I am supposed to do, this is what it is. God is telling us in Scripture, this is what I want you. I want you to be moral, and this is how you can do it. And so many people, I know it's not you guys. It's these other churches. Most people don't read the Bible. They will come to church and have somebody like me up here tell you about it, which is fine. But you need to be in the Bible all day long, every day. You need to be in God's Word. Because we only talk a few things here. I'm only talking like about a half an hour. You guys, you can, when you get in the Bible, all of a sudden you're going to see things that God's telling you what to do and ha- to help you and to, have, to be moral. This is what God's heart is. That's why we got to be in God's word. But for some reason, we think, nah, that guy up there, he'll he'll tell me what to do. And then you don't even do half of that. So what in the world? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ or not? And let me tell you, some of you today are, are probably brand new today. And I am so glad that you're here. And you don't even have a relationship with God. And I am so glad that you are here. But I'm going to talk right now just to those that are followers of Jesus Christ. Whether you're online or in the venues. Do you do you do what God's called us to do? God says we need to be moral. God wants us to be moral and he and over in scripture over and over he shows us what to do. But for some reason we just don't do it. Oh, my goodness. So put the second one up there, the second picture, the the moral will of God. That is what God does for all of us. He wants you and me, all of us, to be moral, to do what God has told us to do in Scripture. That is what God's heart is. You know, because a lot of times we we don't want to be moral. We want to do other things, you know. You know, would it be... let Let me ask the question. If you are married and you had sex with somebody else, would that be moral or immoral? Nobody's saying it very much. <laughs> it's not a trick question. <laughs> is it a, is, would it be moral or immoral if you're doing that? Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that is not the right... Is it, is it moral or immoral to just beat your wife or your husband no, we know that that's not right. But for some reason, that sometimes happens. Is, would it be moral or immoral if we were, if we're cheating on our taxes? Well, that's kind of a... That's probably, <laughs> no, 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 that would not be moral. That would not be moral. <laughs> but this is what God's talking to. He wants you and I to be moral, to be honorable, to be like him. 
That is his heart. And that's what his heart is for you and for me, that we would be moral. And then, let me give you, though, the third one. The third one I want to give you is this, is the, the per- personal will of God. The personal will of God. First of all, uh, we, the first two that we, we talked about over there, in the, in the, if we put that picture up there, nope, put the one about the, there we go, there we go. The personal will of God. That is where it's different. Because uh, the other two is for all of us. This one is different. The personal will of God. God will have a will for you and a different will for you and a different one for me. God will have different things for each and every one of us. In fact, let me give you a story. Um, I think I've told you before that over the last few years, we've gathered lead pastors in in Tri-Cities, and we gather together for once one day. And, uh, and we talk about different things, pray for each other, pray for the other churches, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and we also sometimes, some pastors will share their, some stories. They never say names, thank goodness, but they tell stories. And I remember one story, I'm going to say it's probably about eight or nine years, eight or nine years ago. And <clears throat> one of the pastors said, man, I, had a, I have a story. He goes, he said, I had a, <clears throat> I had a guy that's probably in his early 20s. And, uh, and he came into a relationship with God. And, and he was excited about that. And the pastor said, he says, you know what? I'm so excited that you came to know Jesus Christ in our church. He says, but I have a feeling that you should be going back to your hometown. And he goes, no. No, I like it right here. I don't, I don't want to go back to my hometown. I don't want to do that or anything. So he didn't. Six months later, he says, the guy comes in to the pastor and says, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm supposed to go back to my hometown. And he goes, okay, if you're feeling that, that must be that God wants you to go back there for some reason. So he did. So he went back home. About three months later, the guy called the pastor. And he says, man, are you a prophet? And he goes, no, why? He goes, well, you said I should go back home. And I actually, you know, you know, I went back home. And when I got home, about a couple months after I got home, my older brother had brain surgery. And three days before he died, I led him to Christ. And he said, God has a plan. Now, was that for everybody? No, it was for him. This is what God does. God has God has something for you, a a will for you, something. He wants to give you something to do, and it's going to be different from you than you than me. We're all going to have something different. It's just just amazing how it works. Scripture tells us this. It says in 1 Thessalonians, it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified. What does sanctified mean? I mean, we don't use that in, in... in words anymore. You know, when you're going to lunch, lunch you're going, what are you going to have? I'm going to have that sanctified salad. No, I, I, and we don't talk like that, right? So what does that mean? What is that talking about when we're talking about sanctified? Sanctified means pure. It means without pollution. God wants us to be that way. Question, are we doing that? No. Why? Because we are sinful, fallen people. And God wants to take every issue and problem and stuff that we have, and he wants us to help us to to clean it up. One at a time. One at a time. So over time, we will be pure without pollution. That is God's heart for you and for me. What 1 Peter says this, as a result... You do not live the rest of your life, earthly, the earthly life, for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. That's once we come into a relationship with God, that is what we are to do. We are to come into the will of God, not the will of ourself, the will of God. When we come into a relationship with God, it's all about God, because God knows everything. We don't. We think we do, but we don't. But we don't. Amazing. 
And I'm going to tell you, you know, even though you, you, you can be as moral as you want, but you know that sometimes sin is fun. Let me give you a story. True story. One of my pastor friends was telling me this story. He, he was telling me about a guy, uh, he, he lived here, another guy lived over here, but the guy over here would never park his car in front of his house. He would, he would put it over in this guy's house. And, and he, he let it for, go for a while, but, then, but it just kept going after a month, a tooth, and, and all of a sudden he, he, goes, he goes, hey, he goes, how come you always park in front of my place? When, when people come to my place, I don't have any place to park. Why can't you just park over there? And he says, okay, okay, I will. But he never did. He kept it right there. And then, and then it came summer. And summertime, it was getting warm. And the guy parked his car right over here, and he rolled down his windows because it was hot. That's when the, the guy that lived here decided to turn on the sprinklers. And he watered the outside of the car and the inside of the car. And all of a sudden, that guy started parking his car in front of his house, right? And, he st and that, that just solved it every right there. I mean, it's just crazy. Just think about that. Now, was that wrong to do? Yes. Was it fun to do? Yes. Yes. Exactly. I mean, that's just what happens when things, when people do that. I mean, it's just just crazy thing. But that's what we, you know, it's, it's kind of like this. I, you know, yeah, I know he shouldn't have done that, but it's kind of like a sneeze, you know? Yeah, when you sneeze, it feels better, but you got snot everywhere. I mean, that's just exactly what happened there. So, so let's talk about uh, two types of sin, two types of sin. Um, the first one I want to talk to you about is the sin that we do is, is sins of commission. Sins of commission. Uh, these are the sins that we commit, that we actually do. This is what we do. We sin. And, this is, and, and that's why I'm saying we are not moral yet. We sin. We struggle. We have issues. But God, hmm, but God... But God helps us with each and every one if we allow him to. That is God's heart. He wants, he says, none of you are, none of, none of us, nobody on the planet, nobody on the planet is moral. We're all sinful people. But God says, I will help you if you allow me to on each and every one. That is what he wants to do. Scripture tells us this. Romans 6 says, Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? Paul is asking this question and he's answering it. And here he says, Shall we go on sinning so that grace can, may increase? And here's what he says. By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? In other words, no, we are not to sin. We need to stop sinning. Oh, but sometimes it's fun. And sometimes it's good. And, but God says no. God wants you to be moral. And God will help you with your things and my things. And he will tell you what to do and tell you something that's different and something me. Because you have different sin than I do. Just think about that. You know, it's interesting because in the Bible, for those of you who haven't read in the Bible, I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, they talk about in the Bible that God calls us stupid sheep. Now, we could be offended but I think it's a great analysis because that's exactly what we are. Because, so they talk, it talks about in the Bible about <clears throat> here's some little sheep, cute little sheep, lovely little sheep, just nice little things. But all of a sudden, what happens? The shepherd is there watching all these sheep. And there's one or two or something like, oh, because why are they called stupid sheep? Because they're going, oh, look at the green grass over here. So they go over here and they start eating. And then, oh, look over there. And then they go over there. And they start, oh, let's go over here and eat. And they start over there. And then all of a sudden, that stupid little sheep looks up and goes, where's the flock? Where, where's, the, where's the shepherd? 
What, where, where is he? That stupid little sheep got lost. And that's what happens with us. That's what happens with us. We come into a relationship with God, and then we go, oh, look at the shiny thing over here. Oh, look, look over here. The, oh, I can get more money here. And, I can, and all of a sudden, you're going, I don't feel, I don't feel God around me. It's like he's, he's gone. Like I, I just don't feel him like I used to. It's because you've wandered away from him. You've wandered away from him. And that's not his heart. He wants you to always be in relationship with him. But we're just like a stupid sheep. We just go, we just go in here and there and there, and then we look up and go, where is everybody and where, where's the shepherd? What is going on? Amazing when you stop to think about this. In fact, do me a favor. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, you're a stupid sheep. <laughs> and then turn to the other person and say, you're a stupid Pete. <laughs> Some of you really like that one. <laughs> you're saying to your wife, you are a stupid sheep. Yeah. And she's saying right back to at you. <laughs> Mm. So, what are you doing that's outside of the of God's outside of God's moral will? What is it that we are outside of that? What is that? Just think about that. Sometimes it's lustful thoughts. Sometimes it's about just money and stuff and things and all these different things that goes on. There's so many things that just comes, Satan just comes right to us and we just say, oh, okay, and we just do it. And that is not God's heart for you or for me. Yeah. So let me give you this other one. Number two is this, the sons of um, omission. You know what that means? That means uh, these are the things that we should do, but we're not doing it. There are good things that God is calling you and I to do and we're not doing it. And I'm ta talking to you not about as a group, but each of us. Like maybe, let's say, for example, this guy that this parked his car over here and stuff, he shouldn't have done that because now this guy is going to hate him forever and he will never be able to help him to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. So we need to stop and think about what is going on. God has good works for each and every one of us. But are we actually doing it? Some of you, I've, I've had some people say, you know, I, I feel like God's telling me to, to help somebody, this, this certain person and stuff. And, but I, I, just, I just don't know if it's, if it's really him and stuff. Oh, yeah, Satan's really making, wanted you to do that. Yeah, he wanted you. Satan, Satan isn't going isn't to have you be generous. It's always God. That's always God. If God is coming to you and he is saying, hey, so-and-so needs some help, then that's God. And that is what God wants us to do. And you know what we do? We, just, we stand by and we just go, oh, I'm just not really sure. I'm not sure. I don't know whose voice that is. I just don't know if I'm supposed to do this. It's gonna, I, I feel it's going to be weird. It's going to be funny. I just don't know what to talk to them. I just, you know, so I'm just not going to do it. But can I tell you something? Delayed obedience Hmm. It's really disobedient. Is disobedient. Disobedient. <laughs> I'll get that out. There we go. <laughs> Delayed obedience is really disobedience. Do you want to be disobedient to God? God has a plan for your life, and your life, and my life, and that is what God does. That is His heart for you and for me. Hmm. Some of you, some of you, I want to raise your hand if you raise, if you were, if you were alive in the 1980s. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> because in the 80s, they had, I'm going to tell you, they had the best video games ever. Remember? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, Frogger, ah, that wasn't my, that wasn't, the, I just got a stoop. I, I was trying, ah, anyway. Uh, um, but there was all other ones. There was, the, like, there, there's Donkey Kong. Oh, man, do you remember Donkey Kong? Anybody remember that? 
Three of us? Okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> Pac-Man, you remember that? Okay, yeah, some of those? Okay. And then there was another one called Asteroids. Do you remember Asteroids? Okay, now here we go. Here we go. So for those of you that um, are older or younger and haven't been any of those things, uh, let me just tell you, uh, it was, it's, I remember after school, I would go to 7-Eleven with my friends, and we'd play all these games right there. It's just, they don't, have, they don't play them anymore in 7-Eleven. They're suckers, but anyway. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so we played Asteroids. And so what Asteroids is where, where you had this little like, triangle-shaped, uh, I don't know, plane or whatever it was out there, uh, flying in, the, in space, and here's all the, here's all the um, asteroids, and they're shooting them and stuff, and it was just trying to get rid of them, get rid of them. but there would be times where here's the ship, and there's this, there's these asteroids all the way around it, and you're like, where am I going to go? Well, they had this, this button called the, the hyperspace, and when you hit that, it would disappear, and you'd go, come up over here somewhere else, and you'd be free. And I was looking at that, and I was thinking, that's, that's, that's amazing when you stop to think about that. Because here's what happens. You know, hyperspace is one thing, but let me tell you, when we do the wrong things, you know what God gives us? He gives us a little button. And it's called hyper grace. He says, you blew it, but I still love you. Let's try again. That's what God does. That is what he does. He doesn't say, oh, screw you. I'm just sick and tired of you guys. Get out of my sight. No. God goes, okay, you learned from something. Let's get back up. Let's get on the horse. Let's, let's do the right thing. God doesn't hate us. He loves us. And he's called a heavenly father because we are his children. And what does a good father do? He helps his children. And sometimes he has to do some things that, that the kid doesn't like. You can't go to your room or you can't go to your friends. You can't do this. You can't do that. And you get mad and you get angry. But God's the Father. And he loves us. And he will never leave you or forsake you. He loves you so, so much. And he gives you this thing. when We blow it. And it's called hyper grace. And he says, let's try it again. That's amazing when you stop to think about it. Just He will never, listen, he will never, ever, ever give up on you. He won't. He will never give up on you. He's always there with you. Ephesians 1 says this, in Christ, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out, this is God, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Not our wills, his will. This is God's heart for you and me. So let me ask you a question. What are you doing that you're not supposed to do? And what are you not doing that you are supposed to be doing? That is the question. And that is for each and every one of us to answer that question. Let's pray. So, Father, I thank you that you are a good God. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you know that we are sin, that we are sinful people, that we do bad things, we do things that hurt people. But, Father, you, you say, let's try it again. Let's try it again. And you give us another chance and then another chance, and then another chance, and then another chance. You, you never give up on us. You love us, and you care about us. You died on a cross for us, and we're so thankful that you died and rose again so that we can have a relationship with you. And yes, we're going to blow it, and you know it, and we know it. But God, would you help us to be moral, and to listen to what your vision is for our lives. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. You are a good, good father. And we love you. And we thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have done. And, Lord, today, there are 
some that are online and some that are in person that haven't come into a relationship with you yet. But today's their day, and they know that. And Lord, I pray for those right now that know that they know that they know that they need a relationship with you. And I pray, Lord, right now that they would say something like this, Father, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I know that when I come into a relationship with you, it means everything changes. Lord, forgive me of my sins and change me to be a follower of Christ. And Lord, I thank you for those that are saying yes to you right now. And we celebrate that and we love that. And that shows that more people are coming into a relationship right now and in heaven. And we say thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen.